Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and once again I'm coming to you with another range report. And today's range report is definitely on something interesting and different. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Gerson 14T. Now this is a 380 pistol that obviously looks very much like a Beretta. In fact, it's kind of a copy of a Beretta 80X, 84FS, or 85FS but it has one unique feature that those pistols do not have, and that is a tip-up barrel. Yeah, some of you guys have, may have never seen this on any pistol before, but Beretta has actually offered this in other pistols in the past. Here is my Beretta 950 BS, and it has the tip-up barrel. It's a really unique feature on some of these smaller caliber mouse guns because sometimes these are really hard to rack. The recoil springs on these are pretty stout and manipulating the slide to charge the weapon can be kind of tough. So this allows you to insert the magazine, tip up the barrel, insert another round into the chamber, close it up, and you are ready to go. Now, when I showed this particular pistol off on the Texas Gun Vault 2, somebody, I think, trying to be a wise guy said, hey, that's an easy way for grandma to kill herself. I'm like, well, these models have been around for a very long time. The tip-up barrels have never had an issue in the past. So I really don't think that really is a safety issue. It's just unique in this particular model. Now, somebody told me that there were versions of the Beretta 86 that also had this tip-up barrel in 380, but I have never seen one in person. So who knows, maybe this is an exact copy of that, but it is definitely different because even when I try to rack my Beretta 84 FS, this slide, can be kind of hard to manipulate. Now I can do it, but I know people with weaker hands like my wife, she can't rack this slide. So this gun is unusable for her, but this particular gear saw does address that issue. I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of this in just a moment. But before I get into the things that I like and don't like about this pistol, as always, I wanna thank the people that make these videos possible. First and foremost is the owner of this amazing pistol. He's a good friend of the channel. His name is Jack. Jack, thank you so much much once again. As always, I want to thank my Patreon supporters because through their monthly donations and support, they help keep the lights on. And if you guys want to become a Patreon supporter, you can do it for as little as $1 a month. There's a link in the description below. And as always, I want to thank my primary sponsor for all of these range reports because he provides the ammunition, thus making them financially feasible, my good friend Mark from Brownworks. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and speculate and think if you're watching this range report, you might be interested in this particular Gearson 14T, which of course is a copy of a Beretta. And you probably have a collection of Berettas. You might even have an heirloom Beretta. That you're thinking to yourself, man, oh man, wouldn't it be so cool if I had a set of custom grips for this thing? Something maybe with a custom logo, a custom engraving, or a custom texture? Well, I have the perfect grip company for you, Brownworks. Brownworks is a custom grip company making a wide variety of grips for a wide variety of firearms out of a wide variety of exotic woods and materials. Mark over there is an artist. He's a craftsman. He is always innovating and coming up with new and cool products, such as wood grip for AR-15s. Yeah, what other grip company is making stuff like that? Mark can make stuff out of laminate woods and in a wide variety of colors and other materials. So I'm going to ask you guys, if you guys are interested in something like this, please go over there and check out his website. I'm going to put a link in the comments section below. You guys can go over there and see all the amazing products he has to offer. And also go check out his Instagram and you can see all the amazing work that he is constantly putting out. And if you don't find what you're looking for on his website, let me tell you, he has some of the best customer service in the world. So please contact Mark. Tell him what you're looking for. And when you do, tell him the Texas Gun Vault sent you. All right, so once again, let's talk about exactly what this is. Now, this is a Gearson MC14T, and if you're unfamiliar with the company of Gearson, they are a company based in Turkey. Now, some people on that fact alone are not going to like this gun. They're going to say, I'm never going to touch it, and I totally understand. I'm not really a big fan of buying guns and sending money to countries that might not be the U.S.'s biggest ally. However, I really feel in order to be fair, we need to take the politics out of it. This gun itself is an inanimate object. It does not represent the politics of Turkey or the people that made it. So I think, as I said, to be fair, let's just look at this gun for 
what it is. Now, the other gear saws that I have reviewed, both a Browning High Power copy and a Beretta 92 copy, have actually been pretty darn good. I'm actually impressed with the machining of these things, the way that they're finished and put together. They really do feel like quality firearms. Now, Turkey does have a long, rich history of firearms manufacturing, and I have to say that this gun does meet the expectations that I would expect from a well-crafted firearm. Now, let's talk about the tip-up barrel. That really is what makes this thing special. Obviously, they're trying to compete in the market where the Beretta 80X is currently at, or the Beretta 84 or 85. But adding this tip-up barrel is really cool. And I'm not really sure if they copied the Beretta 86 exactly. Just having this feature actually makes this type of gun, I think, a little bit more palatable for many people that would have struggles racking the slides of those other guns I just mentioned. And as somebody mentioned in the comment section when I did talk about this over on the Texas Gun Vault 2, they said it's really more of a copy of a Beretta 86. Now, I've never held a Beretta 86 or seen a Beretta 86, but maybe one of you guys own one and can tell me how close of a copy is it actually. All right, so let's talk about the things I like about this gun and don't like about this gun. Well, the first thing I have to say is I'm pretty impressed in the past with Gearson's quality and having it here on the table, looking at it, racking the slide, looking at how it's put together, looking at the finish, I'm pretty impressed with it. It feels like a quality firearm. It doesn't feel like junk and it doesn't look like junk. Honestly, if it didn't have the Gearson name on it, I think a lot of people really would confuse it for a real Beretta. In fact, that's something I like about this gun too. It does borrow those Beretta aesthetics. Man, Beretta just has that really cool open slide design. I think it just looks fantastic. Now, I do think they use it on guns that don't need to have that look, but that open slide design really does supposed to help mitigate things like stovepipes and other failures that you might get on many closed slide design pistols. I'm also a big fan of the color of this. You guys know I love Flat Dark Earth. Now, I'm 100% sure they offer this in other colors, but Jack picked up one in Flat Dark Earth, and I think that is just a really cool, tacky, cool color. And the finish seems to be applied very evenly and very well. Also, for a Turkish pistol, I'm pretty impressed with the trigger pull of this gun. Let me go ahead and make sure this gun is safety checked. We have nothing in the chamber and no magazine inserted. And by the way, this does omit the magazine disconnect safety that you do find in many of the Berettas, which actually makes the trigger pull pretty nice. So we have a pretty good trigger pull here. It is not a custom trigger, but it's pretty good. Little take up there. There's no grit. You hit the wall. Nice clean break. Then let's take a look at this reset. It's actually pretty short for a double action, single action pistol. Then you have a little bit of take up and you're back at that wall. This is a really smooth, really nice trigger for a pistol in this price point. So I'm really happy with that. I'm also a big fan of the controls. All the controls are in the places you would expect them to be. They're pretty much just a copy of a Beretta. Everything is easily reachable from the magazine release to the slide stop and even to open the tip up barrel right there. Everything is natural, it's ergonomic, and it feels really good in my hand. The last thing I really wanna say about this that I like are the sights. Now, unfortunately, the front sight is not dovetailed. So that is built into the barrel. Now the rear sight is dovetailed and it does use a three dot system, which I'm a huge fan of. I think they just look nice and probably these sights are going to be compatible with other Beretta models. I'm not 100% sure of that, but if you do want to change out those rear sights, I'm sure you could. But I think the sights that come on at factory look pretty darn nice. So now let's talk about a couple things about this pistol that I don't like. And the first thing is something I always gripe with mini Berettas on, and that they put the owner's manual literally on the gun. Now, I know this isn't a Beretta, it's a Gearson copy of a Beretta, but they follow this as well. So over here in this side, it says, please read owner's manual before use. Please don't put that on your pistol. It doesn't need to be there. It's not for safety, and it makes the gun look really, really ugly. Now, I have talked about the pros of the tip-up barrel. However, 
here is what I think is going to be the deal breaker for this pistol for me, if it ever comes to me having an opportunity to buy this. Because of this tip up barrel, let me show you how to field strip this gun. You take out the magazine, you pull the hammer back, and then you pull the slide back and you lock it open. This is what the owner's manual says is a complete field strip of this gun. As you see, the slide is not off of the frame. In fact, there is no way to get the slide off of this frame, as far as I can tell, without taking off the barrel. And that requires removing a pin and a roll pin from that, removing that and the slide will come off. So if you have to get into the internals of this gun, you can't easily. And I think that is a big detriment to this design. Now, when it comes to other Beretta tip-up barreled guns, like the 950 BS, all you have to do to field strip this is open the barrel, pull the slide back, lift up, and it comes off the front. I really think Gearson should have figured out a way to be able to properly field strip this for cleaning and maintenance. They say this is all you need to do, but honestly, I am not very happy with that. You guys know I love the mechanics of guns, and if I have to have special tools, to get the barrel off so I can take the slide off a pistol, I don't think it's that well designed. So not really a big fan of that. So that was the complete feel strip. And as I said, I think that honestly is the biggest deal breaker for me. One other thing that I think might be a big negative for me is that this is direct blowback. And I understand a lot of people say 380s don't need to have a locking mechanism. However, many other gun companies do make 380s in locking mechanisms in their pistols. And that actually makes them softer shooting, makes the slides easier to rack, and eliminates the need, honestly, for that tip-up barrel. Glock does it in many of their models that are in 380. Well, I think Beretta and companies like Gearson could do the same. They could add a small locking block, a dropping block like you see on the 92. I understand it requires a little bit more machining and a little bit more time, but honestly, I think it makes this particular caliber a little bit better. I understand in 25 ACP, you don't need it. Maybe in 32 ACP, you don't need it. But 380 is right on that border. It's almost nine millimeter in some calibers or some manufacturers. So it's getting really close to those pressures. So I really feel like having a locking mechanism would really enhance this particular pistol and this particular design. So those are the things that I don't like about this thing. All right, so now let's get this thing to the range. Let's see how it shoots. Does it shoot as nice as a Beretta? Is it accurate? Does this nice trigger pull translate into a good shooting gun? Well, we're gonna find out. So let me load up one of these magazines. As always, I'm gonna start with the target at seven yards, put a magazine through this, see how it shoots, and give you guys my initial reaction. And to be honest with you, like the other gear saws that I've shot in the past, this thing is very natural to shoot. It's very comfortable in your hands. And for a direct blowback 380, it's soft shooting. In fact, I think it's even softer shooting than my Beretta 84FS. I have to say, when it comes to the accuracy, I'm pretty happy with it, especially at seven yards. Might be shooting a little bit low for me, but I'll try to tighten up that group. And I have to say that the trigger pull on this is really nice. Honestly, it might be better than the Beretta 84 that I personally own. All right, so now let's set out the target at double the distance. Let's see what happens to this grouping and see if I can shoot this pistol any better.
And uh-oh, we have our first malfunction. Now I'm gonna go ahead and spoil a little bit of this for you. We're gonna have quite a few issues in this range report, but I do narrow it down to what I think the primary culprit is. Now, I'm using a different magazine and I'm using different ammunition on this portion of the review. And some of you guys are gonna ask, what ammunition are you using? Well, I took some Blazer Brass. This is just some basic range ammo. It says it is 95 grain full metal jacket. Jack did provide me with some ammunition and it turns out based off of the head stamp it's some ammunition that I was going to take to the range with this gun anyway and I'm probably going to mispronounce this name but it is Cellar and Below I believe is how it is pronounced and this is 92 grain and this is also full metal jacket and it is brass cased. Now I will say that in this portion of the range report where you just saw the malfunction I was using the Blazer Brass. So I can tell you that these two ammunitions definitely feel different when you're shooting them. The S&B ammo is definitely stronger than the Blazer. So that might play into some reliability issues with a direct blowback gun like this when you have a very stout recoil spring. So I'm gonna roll in a picture here of this failure to what I think is extract because the round that you see in the chamber is a live round. It is not a spent casing. So I'm not really sure how all that happened. I'm either gonna call that a double feed or a failure to extract. I'm not really sure where in the cycling process of the gun we had an issue all right so now i'm going to try this again hopefully this was just a one-off mistake so let's see what happens All right, and now we have a different issue. We have a nose dive right out of the magazine into the gun just below the feed lips. Now this gun came with one magazine and Jack did buy two other magazines from EAA. Now this is the third magazine and I was using the S&B ammo, which is a little bit more powerful as I mentioned. So this is a completely different issue than I had before, but I wanted to document this because it's two different unique failures. Now, I do believe this issue is going to be with one of these magazines. Regardless of the ammunition that I use, we're going to get them to nosedive right below the feed lips. So that's what's happening, but I did want to document. All right, let's try this again and let's see if we can get this gun to run a little bit more reliable. All right, so now I think we're finding a good combination. I can definitely tell you one of these magazines works better than the other two. Now, I really should have marked them at the range. However, I didn't bring a pen, so I guess Jack's gonna have to kind of figure out which one of these mags work best with what ammo for him. But one of them seems to work pretty good. One of them definitely doesn't work at all. And the other one is kind of splotchy in whether it works or not. So this thing might have some magazine issues. But I think as long as you're using the 
the right magazine, you should be fine. Who knows, maybe this thing is gonna break in as well. All right, so now I think I found the magazine that works the best, so now let's take this thing out to 20 yards and bench rest it or shoot it up against a barrier. I like to see if I can take as much of the human element out of it and how the accuracy pans out for me. All right, so let's shoot this thing at 20 yards, another magazine, and hopefully it's gonna run well. All right, so we got through a complete magazine with this thing with no issues, just like the first shot. So I don't know what happened with those other two mags, and the accuracy for me for a 380 at this distance is pretty good. So for practical defense at that distance, I think it's just fine. It is a naturally shooting pistol. Very easy for you to aim and it's very comfortable. All right, so a lot of people are probably going to buy this gun or be interested in this gun for self-defense. And of course, I like to shoot these guns fast. I like to see if I can change the magazines out fast and get them back in action. Now, I am having some issues with magazines, but hopefully I won't have any in this test, but we're going to find out. So I'm going to use two magazines, exchange them as fast as I can and shoot the gun as fast as I possibly can and see what kind of accuracy I can point shooting and if I can do this all relatively quick. Well, I'm not going to complain about those results. I can shoot this gun really fast. I have to say, this trigger is really, really nice. And I think even better than the Beretta 92 clone from Gearson that I shot before. Now, when it comes to these magazines, those magazines just shoot right out of there. I was also shooting a Browning High Power at the range on this range trip, and I had to pull those magazines out. It was an older High Power, so it was so nice when I can just push that button, and that thing just flies out of there, so you can reinsert that new magazine and get that gun back in action. And I have to say, it's a naturally pointing firearm. As you saw, I was point shooting and I had every round on the target at that range and shooting that quick. So for a defensive gun, I think this thing would be pretty good. You would just have to make sure you trust the reliability. It hasn't proven that to me yet, but if you have one with no issues, I think this might be a fantastic self-defense firearm if you're looking for something in 380. All right, there's one more thing I want to do on this range trip, and that, of course, is give my wife Becky a chance to shoot this. She likes 380s. In fact, one of the guns she normally carries is a Colt Pocket Light Mustang, so she's very familiar with guns like this. So I'm really curious if she's going to enjoy shooting this and what her accuracy is going to be like. So let me load up a magazine, see if she has any issues, and if she likes it or not.
And so I have to say, I was really surprised by her reaction. As you guys noticed when she was shooting it, she was having to readjust her hands a whole bunch. Normally when I have issues with firearms, she doesn't have issues with them at all. All. It's really interesting and why I like to always get her perspective. Now this gun is shooting really well for me and she told me as soon as she was done with it, I hate everything about that gun. It was not comfortable in her hand. She even said the length of pull of this trigger was way too short for her and she has smaller hands. She just could not find where she could put the right amount of finger into that trigger guard and the gun was too snappy for her. And I will say for a 380, this is actually a pretty snappy gun, but it's not unmanageable. But that's why I would love the gun to have some type of locking mechanism. Now her pocket light Mustang from Colt has as a locking mechanism. It has a tilting action to the barrel and that does reduce recoil just a little bit but for her it was not a soft shooting gun. She didn't like it and she didn't shoot it very well and was constantly readjusting. And that's why I'm saying to not just look at people's reviews from people that you trust but also go to the range if possible and rent that gun or find somebody that has that gun to shoot yourself because you might discover while a whole bunch of people say that is the greatest gun since the invention of sliced bread, you might shoot and go, that is definitely not the gun for me. Whether it's the size of your hands or just the way you like a gun to feel when you're shooting, you might not like the trigger pull or the type of action. That's really important when picking a gun, especially for self-defense and why I like to always have my wife shoot every gun that comes through the Texas gun vault. So, with all that said and all this footage and all the issues I've talked about, what are my final thoughts on the Gearson 14T or the MC14T? I think this gun is really cool. I like the fact that they innovated and came up with the tip-up barrel in a 380 and a 380 pistol that I think is really high quality. As I mentioned, it seems to be put together well, the machining on it seems to be nice, the finish is nice, the trigger is really nice, it shoots pretty good when it's running right, so I would have to figure out that reliability issues with these magazines. Is it the gun? Is it the ammunition? Is it the magazines? I would have to narrow that down before I bought one or trusted one to carry. But even if I was able to get one of these things to run reliably, I'm gonna have to go back to that one deal breaker thing in that you can't take the slide off the gun without removing the barrel and punching out a roll pin and punching out a pin. I feel that is a deal breaker for me, regardless of how well this gun shoots or how reliable it was. I wanna be able to take my guns apart. Now I know that might not be a big deal for some people. They just want to clean their guns from time to time, but I am meticulous and OCD with my firearms. I love the mechanics of firearms and the fact that I cannot take the slide off this receiver really does bother me. And as far as I'm concerned, it is a deal breaker. And so that's going to factor in big to my star rating. So you guys are asking what is going to be the star rating on this pistol? Well, I had reliability issues, my wife didn't like it, and I can't take the slide off. So with all that said, I do think it has a few features and things about it that are really nice. In this price point, a great trigger. That tip-up barrel is pretty innovative. The finish is nice. It feels comfortable in my hands, but with the issues and the fact I can't take it apart, I can only give it 2.5 stars out of five. Yeah, that's all I can give it. And I think that's a fair rating with the issues I experienced and with the issue of not being able to take off the slide. So some of you guys might say that's not a big deal for you, but it is for me and that's how I factor into my ratings. But I give you guys all the information and where I'm coming from when I give you the final rating. So there you go. What do you guys think? Do you guys like Gearsons? Do you like the fact that they're more affordable copies of other very popular firearms? They are well built. Do you mind that they're built in Turkey? And do you mind that you cannot take this slide off of this pistol very easily? I would love to know because for me it's a deal breaker, but for you it might not be. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. Are you interested in the Gearson MC14T? So, as always, thanks for watching.